Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi Marvel X-Men Psylocke, or Psylocke. I, yeah. Now, like I always say, this line, you either hate it or you love it. There's no in-between. And really, even if you love it, you can still find things to hate within the line or within each figure. Once you hit a pose, it is damn beautiful. And the things these figures can do is amazing, hence the title. But it's a fight to get to those poses and such. And I, maybe fight is a strong term. Challenging? It's a chore. And when I get these in the mail, I'm excited. But at the same time, I'm kind of feeling with dread knowing that getting Ooh, is it gonna uh, no no uh. looking at the package it's your standard amazing yamaguchi packaging it's got all kinds of crazy stuff all over the package it's a little crowded a little chaotic a little hectic but it's okay we're gonna take the cardboard off we'll get to the plastic inside a lot of stuff is actually shown there's more off to the side over there but after getting figures like Carnage and other characters in this line, this feels a little bit empty. On the side, pretty promotional shot of Psylocke. And let me just say the purple motif, which is fitting for Betsy, uh, really works on this packaging. On the back, more pretty promotional shots of the figure, uh, options for the face and eyes. And reading the quotes on the back of Amazing Yamaguchi packages is half the fun. We've got a whoosh, we've got a vroom, and we've got a woof. We've got a today I just do not care. Now get up. I don't have time for this. I'll do my best. I'm not avoiding anything. We should go into the city and have dinner. Come on, Kyoto, where is the focus totality quotes? Quick Google search, just the first two lines gives me this many right here. But that's okay, my superheroes usually talk about dinner and such. On the side, the comic print type pictures, and even more very popular Psylocke quotes. Now I realize my mistake, now I correct it. Face me. And no, you do not get to thank me. I think that says back there. No, you do not get to thank me. On the bottom, another Psylocke picture, warnings, legalese, your winning lottery number, but I'm going to get this open and see what's going on here. Getting the figure out of the package, still in the tray though, you can see all the stuff that was hidden over here behind the packaging. Got the stand in the package and look at how much tape is right here. This was all stuck to the background picture we're used to seeing in the package. And for all my bitching about it, which I forgot to hit record during that part, but it came off just fine. And then as always, we get extra pictures on the inside flaps. Psylocke, X-Men, Psylocke again, Psylocke again, both these pictures being very Rest forward, I guess. And then we get the instructions. As you can see, and I actually forgot about the eye gimmick. We'll see how that goes. But the face, there's no separate hair piece, it looks like. It looks like it goes up under the hair. We have the psychic knife, as we talked about, is the focus totality of her telepathic powers. Swords go in the hands. Got some sash and some scabbard action going on right here. And there we go, all out of the package. And uh, I like it, okay? Just let me say that right off the bat. I like it. But if you're easily offended by some bitching about an action figure, turn ye back now. Because you can love something, but you can also hate parts of it. Looking at the sculpt and the paint, I'm gonna say what I say about most of the Amazing Yamaguchi figures. It is damn dynamic. It just has an overall nice flow to it. They could have just went flat with the costume around here, but they added the straps right here. It's not just painted on wraps around her leg. There's some sculpted wrinkles here and here and down at the knee. That's a good way of bringing out the fact that she's actually wearing cloth, not a painted on costume. And on top of that, the whole figure overall is just lithe. She's a little bit gangly in places, down towards the wrist, down towards the ankles, but overall it has a nice flow to it. And then there's the metallic blue of the costume. I thought at first it would bug me and it did, kind of, but then I got used to it. I, I The overall feel of it, along with the hair, which we'll talk about here in a second, it works. Especially against the matte of the red right here of her sash. And then the softness of her skin tone in between all that, it just works overall. It's a nice contrast. Getting up to her head, it's got a nice look to it. Even with the moving eyeballs, it looks natural. The face is a little bit plain. The skin is just there, so her nose kind of disappears into her face. But that's not as bad if you don't have it under the glare of like the review light here. The lips are just some red punched in, but surrounding that is her hair, and I think that's what sets off the figure for me. The darker, almost black color at the base fading into this ethereal, translucent type purple. Oh, it just totally works. It looks kind of like energy. Her <laughs> 
totality of her thing. I'm not gonna make that joke again. And that's along with the sculpt of it. Yes, it's kind of annoying. No, it is not like Magneto and Batman's cape where it just gets in the way. This kind of gets up and out. It stays where it wants to be, where it wants to be. <laughs> you have a little bit of control over it, but it, it is its own entity and it likes to do what it wants. But it being a little bit rambunctious, since it's on one joint, it's not crazy. you just like, oh, I need to move that up and out of the way done. But that's not to say it's... Oh, see, okay, we're gonna get right into that. With the Amazing Yamaguchi line, they seem to try different things with each figure, even some things that worked on the previous figures. They like to change up and see what happens, and this... I don't like this. The faceplate is essentially just a pin at the top, and the hair doesn't get out of the way, so you have to kind of get up in there... And I wish it had came with a tool that was more useful than the eye tool. Once it's in there, it looks great. And I like not having a seam in the hair for a separate piece coming off. But at the same time, you get too crazy with it, it likes to pop the face off. Now, I don't have any stuck joints. That's good. Uh, that completely works for me. But I do have the common problem of it looking like the joint's not stuck all the way into the socket. Over here, you can see it's flush. Forearm to elbow. Right here, there's gap. Same thing with the wrist. It doesn't look like the joint wants to go all the way up in there. Whereas over here, it's sunk in a little bit. Now, you would think with all that hair, she'd be harder to stand up. But once you find that balance point, she stays up. <laughs> My problem is, if you want the torso straight up and down, you have to bring it up, and the left foot doesn't touch the ground. She's stuck in hip jutting pose to the right. And that's not really a complaint. With it being a female figure, a little bit of dynamicism. Is that a word? I don't know. That's okay, because Rebel Tech is meant to be in action poses 99% of the time. It's just one of those things that if you want these in a vanilla pose, she's not going to stand straight up. They also changed the shoulder joints. And well, I say changed. Another figure may have had these too, where it's a Revel Tech joint going to a ball in the shoulder at the arm part. So it doesn't do that extend and retract that a double Revel Tech joint does, but it leaves the shoulder a little exposed in places. Like right there, if you were to do this, it looks like a shoulder cap. Which it is a shoulder cap, but you know what I mean. They did the same thing at the knee. There's a ball joint going down into the lower leg, Revel Tech joint up at the top. So if you get too crazy with this, it just looks juddy, stabby, uh, breaky. But I'll be damned if it doesn't give you the range of movement you expect in a Rebel Tech figure. So six of one, half a dozen of the other. I, it's going to look ugly, <laughs> but it's a Rebel Tech joint, so you kind of expect that. Going over the articulation, the neck is actually jointed into the hair up towards the top of the head. There's also another piece under there. So separate piece, separate piece, separate piece that is hinged on the actual hair. It's not actually connected to the head. And that goes down to a joint at the bottom of the neck too. But you have this hangy down hair attached to where the face is and it kind of limits motion down. Still look a hell of a lot way down, but it gets in the way when you go side to side. Nice up because of that hinge there. A little bit of tilt, a little bit of tilt. Shoulder joint, Rebel Tech coming out to a ball joint. So you can get up right here, swivels around, and that also helps with some dynamic posing. Rebel Tech joint at the elbow doesn't quite come all the way up, but works pretty good. And then there's swivel there. Rebel Tech joint at the wrist, side, side. You can turn it, and that way you can get up and down. I'm not quite sure what's in the torso joint. I'm assuming it's a longer Rebel Tech joint like we're used to seeing from waist to upper torso, but it doesn't pop apart like I've had in the past with other Rebel Techs. Which is bad because I can't see what's in there, but it's good because it doesn't fall apart when I'm trying to pose it. But crunches forward using both of those joints. Arc back, tilt, tilt. Now I arced her back and she seems to have fallen out of her sash. There's a big gap there and when I try to bring it back down, it crashes. Ball joint at the hips, I believe. Rotation up, back. You gotta kinda work at it, but once you hit that sweet spot, out. There's a ball joint at the thigh, which is kind of crazy, but also it helps the hips get in positions that they wouldn't because they are a ball joint. Like I talked about, the Revel Tech joint, she comes all the way up, kicks her own ass. And when you bring it back, if you don't have it shifted right, and the knee joint looks weird, you gotta kind of shift it back and get behind the knee. Rebel Tech at the ankle, back, forward, forward facing pin, for some rocker, and then toe joint comes up to about right uh, right there. For accessories, Psylocke comes with two almost fists. They have a little hole in it. We'll get to that in a second. She has two super weird looking splayed out hands. She has two sword gripping hands. And then she has two, you know, up 
psychic using powers that she puts up on her head or whatever you want to use it for. Now I have the sword grip hands in here because these are a pain in the ass. They just seem really super tight. And then most of the holes go up into the thumb, so be aware of that when you go pushing. You have your standard Rebel Tech stand. It has actually a clip that does go on here, but there is a hole in her back right there. Plugs in nicely. I usually don't care for these stands because they loosen up. But with Psylocke being as light as she is, it doesn't really matter here. Look at that dynamic posing. She comes with two psychic blades, and I like the transition from pink to purple. It just works. It's just one of those cool little things that stands out against the figure. But they are kind of flat, kind of like uh, they were made homemade out of acrylic or something. Now these go in the fist with the little bitty hole in it. I've had a problem with this because you try to jam it sideways and then put it in her hand. I actually almost broke one of these pegs off. Is it this one? Yeah, you can see the stress mark right there. I've had better luck using her sword hand. If you put the little pin in the hand and then kind of rotate it around until the sides pinch on her hand, that works better. You have much less risk of breaking something off. She comes with a scabbard with the sword handle in it, and then she comes with one without it in it. It's a fake. This is all molded together, so if you want the sword out, here you go. You want the sword in? Here you go. It's not a separate piece. Now this piece right here is actually part of the sash on a ball joint, but getting it on here over this little ornate sculpt at the end of the scabbard, that's a pain in the ass. So I've just been leaving it on there. And I forgot to say there's a Revel Tech joint for the back of her sash too, so that gets all over the place. Plug that in right there, and then you have the sash controlling the sword in the scabbard on her back. Also pulling the connector off with the scabbard, this leaves you without it hanging off the sash. You get more range of movement here. She comes with two swords. I just simply, a sword sculpt. It's got the wrap down at the handle, the gold guard, and then silver blade. But she also comes with two psychic, but she, psychic <laughs> katanas. But she also comes with two psychic katanas, which I can only assume are the focus total. Yeah, okay, that's getting old. Again, transition from pink to purple. Beautiful, I love it. And then the handles themselves are the same as the other two swords. And those are simple just to put in the sword gripping hand. And then like I talked about, there's the alternate face. The first one, it's kind of the angry eyebrow, more battle ready, I guess. The other one, the eyebrows are a little bit more relaxed. There's a hint of a smile, just, relaxed. I guess that's a good word for this face. Like I said, you gotta kind of get in there, pull the top tab down, the face comes out, there's nothing behind it. And the two faces here, I'm trying to turn it around without uh, dropping it, man, not happening. They both have the eye gimmick, so you can put the eyes anywhere you want. And it comes with this tool to move the eyes, but really, this thing sucks. I don't know if the eyes are too tight for this kind of flimsy plastic piece right here. What I did was clip the point off a push pin, and I can put that in there and move the eyes much easier. Now I've grown to not really care for the eye gimmick. My OCD takes over and I can't get the eyeballs straight and I'll look up on the shelf and think, oh, I, 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 bring it back down. I need to redo it again. But with Psylocke, she actually has some hair covering one of the eyes most of the time, most poses. So it doesn't bother me as much here. Plus it looks pretty good. You can't hardly tell the eye feature is there. For comparison, here she is with the amazing Yamaguchi Captain America. Much like Magneto, this one that I took the cape off. I couldn't stand it. I had to put a cloth one on there. But she may be a little bit tiny to use in your Marvel Legends display, which because of the dynamic sculpt, the cartoonish, anime-ish look to the whole thing. Style-wise, I wouldn't put this with Marvel Legends anyway. That's why I have an amazing Yamaguchi shelf. But then, as always, here she is with Gus. You know what? I ain't afraid to say it. I love your hair. I had a friend that used to have a lightsaber that color. So at the end of the day, a fantastic addition to my amazing Yamaguchi shelf. I always say dynamic. <laughs> These are so dynamic. You get them into poses, they look so beautiful. And yes, I have grops. I have gripes about every line. I have more gripes than usual about the Revel Tech figures. But even with all the frustration, even all the cursing that I've done taking pictures, once I get it into the display, into the pose, it's, oh, that's impressive. She's near the top of my favorites in this line. It's hard to beat Deadpool and Wolverine. Mm. And with Gambit coming, we're getting a nice little X-Men display out of this line. I would love to see Storm. Just imagine how crazy her hair would look in this style with her weather powers and such. Yup, I want more. I wasn't saying that an hour ago though, when I was, took her out of the package and was fiddling and posing and oh, I'll do this thing. But now that I'm through the review and I'm to that stage where I need to pick a pose for it to go on the shelf, it's more pleasurable. And I don't mean it that way, you savages. Just the overall fun of the action figure is now setting in. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foosh.